ahead of the big election in 2024, there's that mini election in 2023. Election dates for five states have now been declared. They're out for Madhya Pradesh, for Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Telangana, Mizoram. Polling in Mizoram will be held on November 7th. Let's put out that graphic for our viewers. Madhya Pradesh will vote on November 17th. Elections in Chhattisgarh will be held in two phases. First on November 7th and the second phase will be on November 17th. Rajasthan going to elections on November 23rd. And Telangana will vote on November 30th. The verdict will be out on December 3rd. We are starting, though, with the northeastern state of Mizoram. It's the smallest of the five states that is going to polls. Uh, voting in all 40 assembly seats in the state will take place in a single phase. Now, since Mizoram became a state in 1987, the, uh, the ruling Mizo National Front and the Congress have dominated politics in the state. The ruling MNF is looking for a second straight term in the assembly elections. If the party does win the elections, it would create history by becoming the longest serving chief minister since Mizoram became a state in 1987. However, a surprise victory by the Zoram People's Movement in the civic poll of April has made the Mizoram political battle very, very interesting. Let's move now to the state of Madhya Pradesh, Hindustan ka dil, India's heart, a state with rich historical and geographical significance. The state has had a long history of bipolar politics dominated by the Congress and the BJP. And the battleground in Madhya Pradesh, well, is set to witness a neck-to-neck -neck contest between both these parties. For the ruling BJP, the battle will be a tough one. Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan is battling anti-incumbency and infighting at the same time. Shivrat Singh Chauhan, fondly called Mama, is the longest-serving chief minister of BJP across states in India. 16 years plus and counting. But there is a certain lack of trust in him, a certain lack of confidence in him as far as the BJP is concerned because the BJP has not named him as the chief ministerial face. In fact, the Bharatiya Janata Party is fighting the state election on Vikas and Kamal and ultimately the Modi factor will come in as well. The fact that Shivrat Singh Chauhan is the only OBC chief minister of the party makes the matter even more tricky for the BJP. And hence, the party cannot even outrightly replace him. The BJP is trying to contest these elections under the combined leadership of Shivrat Singh Chauhan and other union ministers. This, as some BJP supporters, want the party to project a new face in Madhya Pradesh. Let's talk about the Congress. The Congress will try and make the most of the situation. From soaring very high in 2018 to that infighting jhatka in 2020, the Congress wants to regain the state with Kamal Nath and Digvijay Singh's political experience and by raking up multiple scams in the state. To Chhattisgarh now, where OBC politics has taken center stage once again. Chief Minister Bhagel is riding on a riding high, in fact, on a bevy of welfare schemes. The Congress is hoping to protect its citizens in the upcoming elections, while the BJP is making an aggressive pitch to regain lost ground. In 2022, the ruling Congress was looking set, comfortably placed. But in the past few months, the Bagail government has faced opposition over alleged scams and the politics of appeasement and religious conversions. That has changed the political dynamic in the state a bit. The BJP, who was in power in Chhattisgarh till 2018, has redesigned its poll strategy and is trying to corner the Congress over corruption and misrule. Meanwhile, India's richest state in minerals remains mired in poverty and political parties continue to campaign on caste issues and soft Hindutva. So is our politics. Okay, Battle Royale in Rajasthan, another Congress rule state where the incumbent aims to win the state and break the three decade old trend of power being shared between the Congress and the BJP alternately. It has happened in other states, it can happen in Rajasthan as well. The BJP is riding high on Prime Minister Modi's popularity. It's hoping to hit the Congress where it hurts the most factionalism and corruption. From Red Diary to Pilot Ghelot Power Tussle, the BJP is using all its cards against Ashok Ghelot's welfare schemes. There's also been the paper leak drama, communal tensions and rising crimes. The Ghelot government thinks that the welfare schemes will be a game changer for them. So here's the thing in Rajasthan, there's something common between the BJP and the Congress. Much like the Congress, the BJP too is battling in fighting. 
It is struggling to unite its leadership and there is uncertainty over Vasundhra Raja Sindhya's return. The question is, can both these parties rise above factionalism? Will they focus on people over power? We'll see on December 3rd. Telangana, the southern state of Telangana, where the election is, well, in a way, three-way. It's the BRS versus the BJP versus the Congress. The BRS is headed by Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao, would like to score an electoral hat-trick. It is a do-or-die battle for the Congress party and for the BJP. It's a fresh opportunity to conquer the state after failing to retain its hold in another southern state, which is Karnataka. That happened in May this year. My guest this evening, Vinita Hariharan, spokesperson of the BJP, joining us on the broadcast. Meeta Chakrabarti is a Congress spokesperson. Uh, and Krishank Man is a BRS spokesperson joining us. Krishank, let me start with you. Let me, uh, since, you know, we've just spoken about Telangana. Uh, you represent the BRS, the ruling party that is hoping for a hat-trick. Ho paiga! Will it be possible for the BRS? 100%, no doubt at all, uh, Shreyaji. Because in August, our leader, our Supremo, KCRG, has announced all the candidates. And we have already set our campaign, our working hmm. president, KTRG, hmm. and our minister, Harish Raugaru. Three constituencies per day, they are campaigning. Hmm. And you see the current situation of the Congress. Hmm. You know, outside the AICC war room, there are accusations on their own Congress president by Congress leaders that he is selling away tickets. They haven't still entered into the campaign. And in fact, I've seen a statement just now in the Hindu by the PCC president that they will start their campaign after Dashara. Ganpati Bappa Maurya ho gaya. Abhi Dashara tak wait kar rahe. The election schedule is already out. BRS candidates are already announced. August finished, ah. September finished, and we are in October. Ah. How do you think ah. Congress, I mean, the ticket selling and ah. all these fights going on within the Congress party? And let me tell you, even before the tickets are announced, ah. two district Congress presidents have already resigned. That there is no Udaipur uh, resolution ah. in practice. The Congress is selling tickets. This is what is happening in Congress. And one more interesting ah. thing. They are campaigning okay. the Karnataka hmm. model, Shriyaji. Well, within Karnataka itself, the MLAs are coming out and speaking in the media that there is fund crunch. There is no fund in Karnataka for development of the constituencies because of the guarantees. Now, that explains that it's a failed model. Why hmm. would anyone want Telangana to okay. have a Karnataka failed model? So, one thing is clear. We are okay, ahead, but, you know, much ahead thing. in the poll buggle, Shriyaji. Sorry? Okay, best of luck. I mean, that is, uh, that is, I'm saying best of luck for that because that seems to be the prediction of analysts who have come to the show earlier uh, earlier today uh, to say yeah, that I've heard, possibly uh, I've, I've heard Telangana the, heard and Chhattisgarh uh, are a dead CNN. done deal. Yeah. On your show, yeah. I, I So believe, that Karnataka uh, and Chhattisgarh are a done deal. deal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that happened at 6 o'clock. Uh, the interesting contest, though, is going to be in the state of Rajasthan, Vinita ji, and in the state of Madhya Pradesh, Meeta ji. I mean, I want to ask you, first of all, Vinita ji, as far as the BJP is concerned in Madhya Pradesh, Mama ji has ruled for 16 years. There is fatigue against him. There is fatigue against him. He, he may have done well, but there is fatigue against him. But to make things worse, there is infighting also within the BJP. What is giving Shivrat Singh Chauhan the confidence to come out and say after the election commission press conference, we are winning 100% when we know that co the Congress is in a very strong position in Madhya Pradesh? No, absolutely not. So, uh, you see, beyond all what happens, uh, you know, within the party and all the power struggles, whichever party is there, there are power struggles. But beyond that, it's the work on the ground that speaks for itself in Madhya Pradesh. You know, I don't want to sound it like a rhetoric. But it is a rhetoric and it's a proud rhetoric for the BJP because uh -huh. of the kind of work that we've done over the last so many years in Madhya Pradesh. You know, if you look at the kind of levels of infrastructure development in, in various, in all aspects of development, there's been multifold jump in all aspects. You know, there's a 360 degree development, right, from women's safety to, you know, infrastructure development, water, uh, roads, bijli, whatever. All all the works of, you know, the basic but amenities Vinita, that are, is the are case. over there. And also the aspirational needs of the, you know, Vinita, public Chief, that is the 
case, if that is the case, if that is the level of confidence of the BJP, can I just can I just counter put a counter question here? I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm often no accused of interrupting only BJP spokespersons, but I promise you that is not my aim. Uh, no, I do no. want to give everyone a fair chance to speak on the show. But Vinita ji, here's here's the thing: if that is the level of confidence that the BJP has on the work done in Madhya Pradesh, why the hesitation to declare? Shivrat Singh Chauhan as the chief ministerial face. It has still not happened. Yeah, so see, that's the strategy that is there with the BJP and it has worked in uh, so many states in the country. And uh, so there is a unique election strategy that the BJP, uh, you know, uh, takes up. And so the, the uh, chief ministerial candidate will be decided later. So we don't want to actually, you know, decide the chief ministerial candidate now and then, uh, you know, uh, fight the elections because it's going to be on the strength of the work that's done by the Modi government on the ground. Uh, I wouldn't say just the Modi government, the center, but also the Shibrat yeah. Singh uh, government and the BJP government in the state uh, on the work efficacy of the work on the ground is what is going to be the plank of uh, the election uh, you know uh, game here okay so here's the one thing that we know meeta chakrabarti about indian voters and we've seen this over and over again they vote a certain way in the state elections and they will vote a certain way in the central elections but as far as rajasthan is concerned meeta meeta chakrabarti uh, do you have a problem of plenty for example uh, does Chief Minister Gehlot continue to be the Chief Ministerial face? What about Sachin Pilot? In, uh, uh, if, if the BJP has a problem with Basundra Raja Sindhya and what her status is, the Congress has a problem too with the status of where Sachin Pilot stands right now. There's already been a rebellion. Will we see a rebellion uh, ahead of the elections as well? Okay, firstly, good evening to all your viewers and good evening to the fellow panelists as well. And I think a problem of plenty is actually a good problem to have. In Rajasthan, we are very clear. We are going under the leadership of our uh, chief minister, Ashok Gehlot, who is extremely popular because of his welfare scheme, starting from the uh, medical insurance of up to 25 lakh rupees uh, per family, 10 lakh rupees uh, accidental insurance uh, to the OPS being restored, to 100 units of free electricity, the entire development work and the welfare schemes that has been brought in by a very popular Chief Minister Ashok Gehlotji, we are going with our progress card and we are asking for a repeat term for the Congress. Similarly, in Madhya Pradesh, we are going with our guarantees, mm -hmm. same with Telangana, along with the progress card mm -hmm. report that we have in our other states, mm -hmm. be it Himachal Pradesh, be it Chhattisgarh, be it Karnataka. In Karnataka, we have fulfilled the promises that we have made be to the woman of the state, be to the youth of the mm. state. And we are going with the track record of the same. Chhattisgarh, for example, again, another state where the chief minister is extremely popular. If you go by any survey reports, be it the welfare schemes, be it the input subsidies that the farmers are enjoying, be it the lo loan waiver scheme of the uh, state government, or be it the fact that Chhattisgarh, okay. among all the Indian states, has the lowest unemployment rate by a Congress ruled government. So we are going with our proven track record of development, inclusive development, mind you, ma'am. And hence, we are going and seeking, and we're extremely confident of our organizational strength in this state, and we are very confident of the results that will come okay. up on the 3rd of We'll December. see. But here's the thing. The, uh, all the three parties that are being represented on the show right now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the major planks that has been launched against them is the fact that they run corrupt governments. The, these are acquisitions that are coming in from the opposition. Is corruption going to be an issue in these state elections? I hope it is. It's good to speak about people's issues. It's good to speak about things uh, about things like corruption. It's, it's important to speak about them and have this conversation ahead of an election. We'll leave it there. I'm sure we'll have many more chats. I'm afraid I didn't have too much time uh, on this particular chat, but we'll call you back once again because election, I mean, the model code of conduct has already kicked in. Electioneering is going to start. So gentlemen and ladies, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. Election date's out. Let's see what happens on December 3rd for the moment. I'm slipping into a quick break on the show.